Hi, it's Rob Moore, take two on the one key vital um, asset or factor of success that I don't think anyone, anyone really talks about. Uh, and if you think about success, usually people talk about hard work, graft, hustle, grind, consistency, 10 years to be an overnight success. And I definitely think they're all relevant and they have a part to play. But the modern entrepreneur uses this asset that I'm about to share. Just want to say thank you for tuning in again for take two. Um, I, built all this, I built this live up and then my Wi-Fi crashed at 8.29. Tried to go non-Wi-Fi, didn't work. What do you do if you don't have Wi-Fi? Oh, you die! Anyway, so we're back live. Uh, and uh, you'll probably hear my kids kicking off in the background. That's a normal daily occurrence. So let's just roll with it. Um, so people talk about hard work and hustle and grind. Um, consistency and persistence and grit and resilience and determination and belief. And they're all really important. Um, but the modern entrepreneur uses other assets that probably weren't uh, as uh, available 10 or 20 years ago. I'm not a fan of you working hard, hard, hard um, at the sake of your family, your health, your well-being, your mental health. And back in the day, they used to say, get up earlier, go to bed later. You've got to do 15 hours a day. It takes 10 years to become an overnight success. And those things, they're just not sustainable. We're learning that there. There's, there's new science around. You need a lot more sleep. If you have five hours sleep a day, unless it's a specific body type of yours, I think that could be very dangerous for your health. Um, and let's be honest. We know that the longer you're playing the game, the more successful you're going to become. So longevity is important. Sustainability is important. But this one asset most people don't talk about this. I had a conversation with Grant Cardone about this. I'm really glad he's talking a lot about this. Um, and I've got probably, it's one core concept or asset, but I reckon I've got 20 different points or examples on it. Um, I can see a lot of you already giving me stars, so thank you very much for that. I'm going to change the way I do my star shout outs and delivery. Um, so I'm probably going to take a break in the middle and then right at the end, I will do all the shout outs for the star givers. Um, because I want to keep the, cons the momentum and the, um, the flow going for my content. So anyone who gives me 200 stars or more, um, I'm going to give you a shout out for your book, your podcast, your brand, your website, uh, or, or whatever other thing you want shouted out for. So I'll, I'll scroll through in the middle and at the end of this live stream to do that. So 200 stars gets you a shout out. Now I have nearly 140,000 people um, that follow me and between five and 10,000 views at least per video. And then it stays on my Facebook page forever. I don't know anyone else who's doing shout outs, allowing you to get shout outs on um, their page. So I thought that'd be cool to do for those star givers. So um, I will scroll through. So if you want to hit me up with some stars for that, do that now. All right. Also, I've got a mini series coming up in the next few days. Um, people will ask me a lot about, Rob, how do I get mentors? Rob, how do I grow to the next level? Who should I model? Um, you know, how can I get meetings and dinners and, and be in masterminds with really successful people? Um, what people should they be? I get those questions a lot and I haven't done any content on it for ages. So in the next few days, I'm going to do a mini series on finding the right mentors, trailblazing, you know, le standing on the shoulders of giants, le leveraging others, how to get the best out of your education and your growth and who to get in your inner circle. Um, because I believe that is a vital element of success as well. So I'll be doing a mini series on that. All right. So um, I said I'd give 100 quid if anyone could guess what this commodity, this, this asset, this area um, that I believe nearly all successful people now are able to leverage. Uh, not so much maybe in sports or traditional areas, but entrepreneurship on starting and scaling a business. I said I'd give 100 quid if someone could get it right. So I'm going to give you a final uh, chance because I did it in my disruptive and progressive Facebook communities. So put in the thread what you think, other than leverage, other than consistency, and other than hard work, uh, what do you think is a, a, a trait of successful entrepreneurs, business owners, startups, scale-ups, you know, social media influencers, people who are making a lot of money in a short amount of time, people who are being wildly successful. Uh, I'll give you a chance to win 100 quid. So go right now. So Kangoo said social media, definitely, but it's not what I'm going to share. Um, uh, people have been saying persistence, um, you know, caring for your mental health and marketing. These are all correct. IT, um, it's not what I'm going to share. Holidays, <laughs> the, uh, the trait of successful entrepreneurs is holidays. Risk taking, focus. I think that they're all really important. No one has hit it, the belief. These are all good, of course. Um, but no one has said what I'm about. Self-belief. Good again. P 
but not the right time. Good again, but not the right answer. Belief, good, but not the right answer. Keep them coming in. Delegation, definitely important. Accountability all day long, definitely vital. I'll be talking about that in my mini series over the next few days. Focus, really important. Looking after your mental health, absolutely vital. Quantity over quality, so being you know prolific rather than perfect. Definitely having fun. Oh, someone, someone finally said it. Being lazy, Marcus, sitting in his bed watching my life's resilience. It's really important. Honesty, honestly, it's important. Your product, of course, your business model, it's vital. Um, passion, of course, I'm calling all these out. And these are definitely um, all traits of successful people. Consistency, I did one on that a couple of days ago. Vibration, oh, your vibration, your energy. Teasing, no, that's just me. Be- beer, all right, I think we've made the point now. Um, love, still, no one, ne- your network, no one. I've had about 100 guesses. Partnerships, no one has got this. So this makes me know that this is the right thing. Uh, and that is speed. It is speed. So speed is the new com- commodity. Speed has currency. Speed has value. People now demand speed. People don't want to wait in a restaurant. People, you, you know, like when my Wi-Fi went down for seven minutes and I was seven minutes late. I nearly had a panic attack. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, and um, who, who likes queuing now? No, people get right, really mad and angry. Um, with with queuing. Uh, And because everything is happening faster and faster and faster because of Moore's Law, which I'll talk about in a moment, um, it's not just that we demand speed. It's not just that we need speed. It's just that everything is moving so quick, we expect speed. And so if you do not move fast, if you do not, your products and serv- do you not put your products and services out there fast, if you're not quick on social media, if you're not quick on the new tools um, and tech and um, functionality, for example, uh, on social media and the, and the new platforms on social media. Uh, if you're green, you grow, you're ripe, you're right. If you're not fast, you're dead. P- you know, businesses are born quicker and they die quicker. Uh, and yeah, there is a bit of an instant gratification mentality, but agility uh, and speed is vital. Uh, David has said chill. Sorry, I do get a bit overexcited uh, doing these live streams. I'm in a real flow. As you've noticed, I'm doing like two a day. All right, so I'm going to give you loads of examples, some experiences in my life where speed has been important, um, and hopefully I can help you get things out there quicker. Hopefully I can help you procrastinate less, worry less, fear less. Um, Don't get into that point of doing so much research, it becomes analysis by paralysis. Um, So yeah, let's go. So TikTok. If you start an account on TikTok now and start putting TikTok videos, you will get 100,000 views when you might have got five on Facebook. Uh, People who are are not influencers, who are not experts, who haven't got big social media platforms anywhere else, they are getting on TikTok and they're getting 100,000 views plus. As Rajesh has quoted from my money book, money loves speed, money hates friction, money loves speed. Currency means to flow. Your personal GDP is the speed at which you flow money. So when when new um, business opportunities and social media platforms and tech come available. It's like the Wild West and things happen much faster. You could grow 100,000 followers or a million followers on TikTok in six months or a year. Whereas to do that on an older platform like Facebook or LinkedIn, it might take you five times uh, as long. Uh, Next thing is LinkedIn changed their algorithm uh, about two years ago now. Uh, When Cambridge Analytica scandal came out with um, maybe insecure, unsecure data sharing on Facebook, loads of people left Facebook. There was a bit of a revolt against Facebook. And I would say virtually to the day, LinkedIn changed their algorithm and they did something. Because my um, researcher outsourcer, General Legend, uh, he messaged me saying, Rob, you're getting 200 organic followers a day on on LinkedIn. We're not even posting. Something's gone on. We need to start posting. Something has changed. We'd put a post on it, get 20,000 views, 50,000 views in a day. We're like, whoa, it, it, it would take like a month to get that on Facebook. What's happening? So we put more posts. We'd get a million views. With Newsjack, we'd get two million views, three million views. Whoa, what, what is going on? Because we reacted quickly. Um, now, sometimes when you react quickly, things don't happen. But often things do. And it's like you get in at the start. You're like an early adopter. When LinkedIn offered live functionality, and my outsourcing and research was like, you need to get on this, Rob. We applied. It took quite a while, actually. We were quick, very quick. Still, still most people don't have it. But we weren't like the quickest, but we were quick. We were as quick as we could be, I suppose. As soon as we found out, right, let's get in. And I'd do a LinkedIn live and I'd, I'd have 20, 25,000 views in the first hour, which for me is massive. I mean, I'd be getting 5,000, 10,000 views on a video um, in a day or two. And I was getting that in an hour on the LinkedIn live. So I was like, whoa, so we go live after live after live. 
Now I get about 5,000 views, so it's tailed off and it's settled down. So it proved that getting in there quickly had value. Your book, is your book better, perfect and not published or done, but not perfect? And when I talked to Grant Cardone, he wrote two or three books in one year and he 10X'd it. Uh, and he was like, um, people were criticizing me for all the spelling mistakes and the grammar mistakes. And he said, I wasn't writing a best written book. I was writing a best selling book. And I need my book out there and fast if I want it to sell. Because what you can do is your second edit. Um, you, in fact, someone sent him a really massive email um, basically saying, hey, Grant, you've got all these mistakes in the book. These, these are all the errors. Did a massive spreadsheet. So Grant's like, right, thanks, mate. And then he can go and re-edit his book based on them giving him the feedback. So, yeah, speed, speed, speed. Done is better than perfect. Do you have a podcast? Probably not. If you don't, you need one. Why haven't you done one? Maybe you're worried about um, if your content is going to be right for your audience. Maybe you're worried about if you're not a good enough influencer or you don't have experience. Maybe you're worried that you don't know how the tech equipment works properly. Maybe, oh, by the way, I'm doing this episode on a Zoom H1, 75 quid, lav clip on mic, 10 quid, job done. Um, maybe you're worried about how you might be judged. Maybe you're worried about, um, I don't know, it, it being perfect or you not really knowing how to do a good quality podcast. Well, I've done 450 podcast episodes now. Actually, if you add my money podcast, it's over 550 episodes. Go back to some of my early ones. Were they perfect? No. Was the quality of the audio as good? No. Um, may, was I maybe as a good an interviewer? Definitely not. Did I do them? Yes. Do I keep doing them? Yes. Do I learn as I go? Yes. Have they got better? Yes. Could I get to 450 episodes if I didn't start? No. You know I've written a book called Start Now, Get Perfect Later. So, start now, get perfect later. Um, so, just a reminder uh, on this video is um, I'm doing shout out for you. So, if you give me 200 stars, I will shout out your book, your podcast, your Facebook page, your Facebook group, your URL or, your, or what it is your business or your brand does. Just give me 200 stars and then I'll shout you out towards the end. Um, so that's something I'm, I'm adding in as a service to you for my live streams. Okay, right. And some people are spending so long analysing property deals, analysing business deals, that they end up losing the deals because they take too bloody long. But then some people say to me, well, Rob, you know, you need to do your diligence and you need to do your research. Of course you do. So you need to find a way to do it quicker. Uh, you need to get um, really good contacts that you can call up who've got loads of experience to shortcut your um, time it takes to do diligence and research. Uh, you need to find a way of doing some desktop research uh, and de-risking. But at the end of the day, you can never be 100% de-risked. So I like to have this principle that, look, I'll get to about 80% research done. Then I have to make a decision. And by the way, sometimes the speed of your decision isn't being quick to say yes, it's being quick to say no. Because the longer you take procrastinating or thinking or researching, or planning to make a decision, and then it's a no, the more time you're ultimately wasting. Now, some people would argue, well, it's not wasted time, it's all part of it, and it is. But I'm just saying, you doing it quicker, not so quick it's bad, but as quick as it can be, will benefit you, it will save you time, it will give you leverage. And, and with property deals and business deals and sales deals, supplier deals, speed is of the essence, because if, you don't, if you're not quick enough to get the deal done, the customer will go to someone else. The deal will go to someone else. The discount will go to someone else. Um, is procrastination costing you? You know, are you, are you using diligence and research and planning and thinking as an excuse for procrastination because you're scared? Because you're worried about putting yourself out there? Because you're worried about getting rejected or ridiculed or making a mistake or not knowing enough or, or, or letting people down or whatever it is? So I would just challenge that thought process. And if it's a real fear, like if you're a pilot, yeah, you have to take your time on the startup checks. If you're a surgeon, you have to pre prepare properly for your operation. Of course you do. But entrepreneurs often, you know, we're not that level of responsibility. If you're sharing information, it can, it can be done is better than perfect. It can be a version one. You can have a, you can iterate and improve. I think my Property Investing Secrets book is on now edition six. We're getting edition three of Make Cash in a Property Market Crash written. A, a partner is writing that with me and he said, hey, look, the book is really good. It didn't really need much editing, just needed updating. So, so we'll get it updated. Now, if I can leverage someone else to help me with updating my books and doing my research and my analysis and my social media and my admin, then I can be even quicker. So something to think about. Uh, next then is decision. How can you be quicker at making decisions? 
Um, how can you shorten the time, the planning, the research, the diligence? Um, how can you build this intuition, this experience, so that when business opportunities come to you, you know how to say no and you know how to say yes very quickly? Um, my legs are going all over the place here. Speed, I love speed. Um, all right. The next thing is, there's, there's so much that you can't actually learn before. You can only learn once you're doing it. So I, I really believe in education, in mentorship, in masterminding. I really believe in you know, reading books and listening to podcasts and listening to audio books and going on courses. I really believe in all that. And I like to do that quickly. Um, but also, you have to learn on the go as well as before the go. Um, so make sure that you learn as much as you can before you go quickly, but keep an open mind to learn while you're doing. Uh, and is, often you learn best by osmosis by feeling it, by being in it, by experiencing it, by trying it yourself. And like I said, a lot of people are sort of, they're putting that off or they're taking too much time. So my supporter program, uh, that supporter program came out, we found out about it, we applied, we got it. And, or did we apply or did Facebook give it to us? Either way, we were quick, we launched quick. The stars feature, which I've been running for about what, since um, Boxing Day, I think. So if that's about a week, not even. Um, I was as quick as I could. As soon as we found out about that, as soon as they gave it to us, we planned the launch. We had a couple of things in first, but I got that without, out within two weeks. Bang, bang, bang. Um, was it perfect? No. Did I know everything about the STARS program? No. Was I learning on the go? Yes. Was I doing a video, then learning, then doing another one, then learning, then doing another one, then learning? Yes. Was I going in the STARS beta group and asking loads of questions when you asked me questions that I didn't know the answer to? Yes. Was I worried that I didn't know all the answers? No. Was I worried about looking stupid when you asked me a question about the STARS program that I didn't know the answer to? No. Why wasn't I worried? Because it's so fucking new that it didn't even matter. I, I couldn't know the answer. I don't have to know the answer. I just have to find somewhere to find it out. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm one of the 20 beta testers in the world of this STARS program. And it seems like I'm doing one of the best out of the 20 of us. Not that it's a competition, but we're kind of all encouraging each other along. Now, some people have bigger following than me, but they're not getting as many stars as me or they're not offering as many bonuses as me because I'm doing videos every day, learning on the go. Every day I learn more about the, the shout outs for the, for the stars and the, the features and the benefits. So in the last week for the stars givers, I've given away a business cash flow training day, a social media training day, given away about 25 one-to-one -one calls, one day shadowing with me, brand and marketing masterclass, I've been doing loads of shout outs for you, your business, your brand on social media. Um, my researcher, my general legend messaged me yesterday saying, hey, Rob, I really like what you're doing with the STARS program, but I think you're losing your flow, shouting everyone out as you do your video. So why don't you do shout outs at the start and the middle and the end so as not to um, you know, like disrupt your flow? I thought, good idea, that's what I'll do. So that's what I'm doing on this video. So you just improve bit by bit by bit by bit. Will people remember my first video I did when I launched the STARS program? No, no, they'd have forgotten about it already. So if I made some mistakes or, or it wasn't perfect, will it matter? No, no, um, because you be get better on the go. You iterate, you compound, you know, you learn um, by experience and some mistakes. And, and the quicker you get out there and get it done, the quicker you learn the mistakes and the quicker you get better. So don't forget, 200 stars on this live stream and I will shout out your business, your brand, your book, your podcast. Um, your social media page, whatever it is that you want. All right. Um, I remember when I first got into public speaking. Now, uh, I was really scared of public speaking, really, 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 really scared. Uh, and I didn't want to do it. But it, it twigged to me that all the big influencers and um, business owners in my space were on the stages, public speaking. So I thought, I've got to do this. But I didn't want to do this and I got scared. Um, so I probably procrastinated or avoided it or convinced myself I didn't need it. This is what we do. We make ourselves nice and safe. Oh, I don't need that. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll do something else. I don't need to do that. Not, you know, I'm doing too much. And you know, all these stories and excuses. <laughs> so um, in the end, what happened was my boss sat me and Mark, my now business partner, we were employees at the time. This was in 2006. He sat us down. He said, right, we've got a massive opportunity here to go and speak on this big stage. Who's doing it? And I immediately put my hand up and went, I'll do it. Now, I knew that, that Mark and my um, ex-boss, I knew they didn't really want to do it. I also knew I didn't really want to do it. But I just, I, I, mean, I don't even think I thought. I think if I'd have thought too much, I probably would have not done it. Uh, sorry, I just dropped the phone. <laughs> um, so uh, I just put my hand up as quick as you can. Right, I'll do it. And I did not know how to speak. I did not know what we were speaking on. I did not, not know when it was. I knew nothing about it. I just did it. Uh, and then I found out what it was and where it was and when it was. I was like, oh, my life. So um, I went to my boss and I pitched him and I said, look, I've got to go 
um, I've got to go on a public speaking course here because I really, uh, I'm, I, I need the skills. I don't feel like I have the skills. I didn't tell him I was worried or nervous because there's some bravado there. Uh, and I did a deal with him. The only course that I could find that I wanted to do, I knew the, the trainer was really good, was in Australia. And it was like a few weeks away. So talk about speed. And I cut a deal with him where I, I think I paid for the flights and, uh, and, and the accommodation or just the flights. And he paid for the course and the accommodation. Can't quite remember, but I paid a bit and he paid a lot. Um, and, and so he sent me on this course. Uh, and we did a, did a little deal, if you like. Uh, and I went on that course. It was a seven-day course. I came back. I started speaking. Uh, I was a lot better, but I wasn't perfect. And I did more and more and more and more speeches. Now I've done, what, 1,300, 1,400. I get paid 10 grand an hour for my um, public speaking. I've made 35, 40 million on the, on the stages across the, um, the country. And, and now what ultimately will be the world um, from getting out there and, and speaking and just doing it. And um, if you look back at some of my early speeches, if there are videos, they're not perfect. They're not even good. I mean, I'm not perfect now. I've, in some ways, I'm better. In some ways, I'm different. Uh, but I went out there and I did it and I put myself in that situation. And I learned on the go and I practiced a lot and I practiced in live scenarios. Uh, and, and, you know, many of my lives aren't perfect. Like my, um, my resourcer, outsourcer, um, researcher, outsourcer, general legend. I, I need to give him a better title, but legend. Um, he messaged me a couple of days ago and he's like, Rob, you need to change jumper, mate, because you, you look like you've got one jumper. Uh, and I'm doing live streams sat on the same chair um, with uh, the bad lighting in the background where my face doesn't look particularly good, uh, where uh, it's an unflattering view. I'm holding the phone in my hand because my tripods are in the office, but I'm still fucking doing videos. I'm doing videos twice a day. I'm still doing them. Would I rather have it perfect or get them fucking done? And I would say get them fucking done. And by the way, my views and reach has gone up and up and up and up since I've been going from one live a day to two lives a day. And the stars feature has come in. Uh, and when I get into the office and, and, and get in the studio and get the, 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 the tripods again and get my studio built in my um, extension um, conversion in my house, then by then my video content and my um, reach and my knowledge will be even better. So I think it's really important. Um, I just start, decided to start my own business late December 2005 when my dad had a nervous breakdown um, and I decided looking at him on the floor being beaten up by the police I don't know if I decided then but that was like a, a eureka epiphany uh, moment for me where I was like my fucking life has to change here because um, uh, I am shamed and look at what's happened to my dad and my life is going nowhere and um, I can't go on like this I can't do this to my family uh, and it was a real like lightning bolt and I think between walking to my dad's pub where I worked and my house, which was next door a couple of times, I decided to, to set up as an artist. I had no experience, no knowledge, probably even no right to set up as an artist. But I could draw and paint really well. That was one thing in life I could do really well. So I just fucking started it. And I started painting and showing people. Um, I didn't leverage social media, didn't have a website, I just started doing it. Uh, and um, there was a lot of things I did wrong in that business, which is why I didn't like really succeed. And I ended up getting into property and personal development and training companies and what I do now. But I started and that led to something else, to something else, to something else. And, you know, by the way, when you think and think and think and procrastinate and wait and wait and wait and think and wait and wait and procrastinate, you never get there. But often, you know, you study the successful companies and entrepreneurs 10, 20 years down the line, they're doing something different. I mean, Rolls Royce are now um, mostly cars, whereas they were always aircraft engineers. Coca-Cola is now refreshment. It used to be medicine. Uh, and um, uh, Lamborghini used to be tractors and now they're supercars. So you, what, the business that you're going to be really successful in, it might be version two or three or five or 20 of your entrepreneurial venture. So the quicker you start, the quicker you get to version two or three or five or 20. Um, I got life leveraged to number one really fast. I wrote it fast and I got it out, to, out fast. And I got it to number one in all books fast and I got published fast. So you can spend, what, years writing a great manuscript and years getting rejection from publishers. Or you can self-publish fast and you can market your book fast on all the social media platforms, which is what I did. Uh, and Hachette courted me and, and I had a, have a massive publishing deal with them. They're the second biggest publisher in the world because I got my book out there fast, launched it fast and got it to number one fast. Um, I then launched my podcast fast because my book had liberated my time uh, and I was bored and I'd wanted to do a podcast for two years uh, and I put it off because I was worried about it not being perfect, worried that I wouldn't have the tech or the equipment or the content or whatever. And people always say, Rob, you were worried about having a podcast based, you know, based on who you are. Well, yeah, I was because it was new to me. No matter how skilled or experienced you are, if something is new to you, you have fears and doubts and worries. 
And I procrastinated for two years. I was listening to Joe Rogan and Tim Ferriss, loving the content, but thinking, man, I should have a podcast. I could have a podcast as big as these guys. I could have a podcast as good as these guys. I could interview really good guests. I've got a load of knowledge. And I was putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And then when I launched my book, Life Leverage, and I was bored for a few days, I just thought, fuck it, let's do it. So I got my head of innovation. I said, research the equipment, uh, budget 200 quid. I want it to be really easy to use. I want there to be minimum buttons. I want to be able to have it in a bedroom or a little studio in my house. I want to be able to carry it around so I can do it in different countries. Uh, and he got me the Zoom H1, the Zoom H4, the Bearing a C1 mic, a little sort of um, splitter power box so you could have two mics. Uh, battery or mains. He, uh, he laminated a little card for me with the five steps to record and then put it on a memory card and send it to him. Job done. Started doing podcasts. Did my fir- first podcast, 35 minutes, nailed it. Hadn't pressed the record button twice. You need to re- press it twice, not once. Failed. Went and did it again. And we are off. So what are you putting off that you should be doing? In fact, in the comments, why don't you share what you're putting off that you should be doing, um, that you should be doing quicker, that you should be putting, it, putting out there. Commit on this video to getting that done. Okay, reply to people fast. Reply to private messages fast. Get back to people who are leads fast. If you wait a day or a week to get back to people on social media or a lead for someone who's going to be a client, in the end, they'll go and buy from someone else or they'll go somewhere else. So you've got to do that quick. I've done a lot of testing on generating leads through Facebook ads and Google ads. And the first 10 minutes uh, are vital. And the um, connection rate, calling people in the first 10 minutes after they've responded to an ad, is like 80% more likely to get through. I mean, give or take. I don't know the exact data. But it's way more likely that you'll get through than if it's after 10 minutes or it's an hour or a day or a week. So much so we stopped doing um, at lead generation on the weekend if we didn't have resource to call them straight away. Um, we created new systems and process and real-time update Google, spread, Google Sheets so that our team could call people immediately. Speed is of the essence, my good friends. Um, okay, what else have we got? Start now, get perfect later. So you learn on the go as you go. Uh, I learn what content to create by doing more content, by responding to you. I learn how to make the supporter program better and the stars feature better by putting it out live and responding to you and answering your questions and challenges and difficulties and lessons and shares. I do loads of one-to-one calls. I learn even more about what you want. I give it back to you. We're in this fast feedback loop. Um, I bought a few companies, Think Big Education, which ended up me uh, being a 10 million pound plus business. I bought a letting agency where we got hundreds of properties into, onto our books. We acted fast. As soon as we found them, we acted fast. We got the deal done fast. We got the heads of terms done fast. We got the contract done fast. Because if we were slow, when it comes to buying cheap properties or cheap companies or, or bargains, you know, cheap watches, cheap cars at discounted prices, if you're slow, you lose. Someone else will get them. Um, Ryan, you know Ryan who does Ryan's Toys Review? Well, uh, that little lad has done 1,607 videos when I last researched. Were his first ones perfect? No. He was three years old. He just started doing them or his parents got him to do them. And I bet his first 10 or first 50 or first 100 were not that good and didn't have many people watched, watching. But he started and he did it and he did them quickly. And if you um, average it out, he's done more than a video a day. If you average out how many videos he's done. Um, so you have to take opportunities fast, my friend. They'll get offered to someone else. Moore's law, the speed of compounding. Moore's law is such that the speed of technology, I think it's the amount of, is it transistors? Transist- is, no. It's the amount of components on a, a, a chip that you can fit on essentially creates double the computing speed every two years. So as Rajesh has just said, you snooze, you lose. So things are happening faster and faster and faster and faster and compounding and momentum and speed and speed. Uh, and that is more and more of a, a commodity, of a value um, add addition or proposition. You're born faster, you die faster. So think, decide, act, review, tweak, repeat. Think, decide, act, review, tweak, repeat. Quicker. Think, decide, act, review, tweak, repeat. So you can prove things iteratively, uh, incrementally, regularly, and not be perfect before you start. Prolific is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. Start now. Get perfect later. Okay, so two more things is I'm going to do the shout outs now. So if you give uh, share 200 stars, uh, then I will shout out your business, your brand, your podcast, um, what you do, your page, your group, your social media, whatever it is that you want. Just to let you know, this is a new feature I'm doing with the stars uh, functionality. Um, 
below or next to this video you're watching, it has write a comment and next to that has a little star button or buy stars. You buy stars, which is Facebook's new currency. Um, I get a cent for every star. I think they cost you two cents per star, something like that, maybe a little bit more. Um, and then this is the start of Facebook's internal currency. In the future, you're going to be able to buy, sell, bid, exchange, auction, live. You're going to be able to have this feature where people are going to be able to buy from you or donate to you or contribute to you live. I think this is going to be amazing and disruptive. Uh, and I'm one of only 20 people in the world that have this feature. So I'm trying to offer benefits rather than you just donate to me for a cause. Um, I'm going to do some charity raises with the stars. What I'm also going to do is put all the star money either into my foundation, the Robin Moore Foundation, and or back into building my personal brand, um, running and improving and more value and bonuses for my supporter program, for um, all the equipment that I might use. I might get, a, get better lighting, get better live stream equipment, get better podcast audio equipment. Um, you know, it costs me about a thousand quid to go and see a guest every time. I don't pay them for my podcast, but my driver and the two or three staff out of the office and the equipment. So all of the revenue from stars and supporters is going back into that. So let's do the shout outs. Let me know if, you're, if it's your book, your website, um, your um, Facebook group, your Facebook page, your podcast, or whatever it is you'd like a shout out. So Vash, Jasani, thank you for the 250 stars. Let me know what you want shouting out. Okay. James Twigger, thank you for your 200 stars. Um, and if you want to put a link or something on my page for those of you that I shout out, you're more than welcome to do that right now. Um, Thea, Thea, I don't even know how to pronounce your surname, um, but thank you for that, Thea. Um, Simon Huggins, thank you for your 200 stars. Anna Geary, thank you for your 200 stars. Sam Adams, thank you for your 200 stars. Sanjay Roy, thank you for your 200 stars. Um, you're all getting a shout out. Kelly Forrester, thank you for your stars. You're getting a shout out. Susan Batty Symes, thank you for your stars. You're getting a shout out. Sam McKay, thank you for your 200 stars. You're getting a shout out. Um, just let me know what it is that you'd like to shout out or put the link that you want on your uh, on this page uh, and I, we will make sure that you get the shout out that you need. Um, I want to thank you for following my work. Um, I feel like um, my leverage and momentum and compounding is really starting to kick off with the STARS programme, with the supporter programme, with the reach I'm getting on my videos and lives. And that's all thanks to you and watching and being a regular follower and fan. Um, I'm really grateful to you. So I'm going to be giving back a lot this year. A lot. I'm going to raise a load of money for my foundation. I'm going to offer sponsorships to get some money for the foundation to start and scale your business. I'm going to give away a, a lot of my time for free. I'm going to obviously build my training programs as well. I'm really excited for this year. Um, and I want to help you explode and start and scale your social media brand. You follow me and you'll learn how to build a really good brand, a personal brand for all the, um, the reach and exposure that you want. Sean, Sean Paul, Stevenson, thank you for your 200 stars. Feel free to shout yourself out. Roger Lawson, thank you for your 200 stars. Feel free to shout yourself out. Um, by the way, um, I, I don't take any responsibility for any links that people put on my social media. You need to do your own due diligence and research on them before you do, uh, buy anything or join anything of theirs. Obviously, I can't do that while we're on live, so I'm just letting you know that. Um, and I've got a mini series coming up. So in the next probably four or five days, every day, I'm going to do themed content on leveraging influencers, leveraging experts, partnerships, doing joint ventures, getting in masterminds, getting the right mentors, standing on the shoulders of giants, uh, and you know who to follow and how to follow them and how to get the best out of them and how to really improve your business with leverage and systems and outsourcing and the right people and the right power team, I'm gonna theme the next few days. So make sure you tune in every morning, every evening where I can do it. Um, I'll, I'll probably do at least one a day, if not two a day. Um, I've got some big things coming up in the next few days. I've got something massive on my birthday, which is the 4th of January. So that's coming up in a few days too. So thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. Uh, uh, if you want to shout out, give me 200 stars. Um, and then your book, your podcast, your page, um, your website can be shouted out uh, by me. Uh, Josh Hanning, thank you um, for your 200 stars. You've just put your link there. That's all good. So have a great day. Watch out for me, 8 p.m. and 8.30 a.m. every day for the next few days. I've got a lot of stuff coming for you and some surprises along the way. Thanks for tuning in.